Hey guys, in this video today, I'm going to help you figure out when is the right time to start applying for jobs when you're in the process of changing your career. So when you are changing your career to something that is totally new to you and totally unfamiliar, it's a little bit difficult to know at what point are you qualified enough? At what point do you have the right level of skill that you are hireable for a new position in this new career. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to figure that out. Now let's zoom out for just a second into the full process of making a career change. So these are the, the five principles that you need in order to go from your old career to your new career. Right, first you need clarity. You need to know what is the new career that you actually want. And by the way, if you know if you still need help getting clarity, then join the the Career Hackers Facebook group. I'll put a link in the description below. I've got a lot of great training on how to find what is exactly the right career for you. So first you need clarity on what career you want. Then you need to gain the skills in order to be able to do your new career. You need some experience. You need to actually practice those skills so you can talk about when you've used those skills. You need proof that you have the skills, right? So that could be some sort of portfolio. It could be a test or a license, or it could just be you answer uh, skills-based questions on an interview. So once you have the proof, then you need to finally make the connections. You need to actually put it all in your resume and actually start applying. So the big question here is, when are these three in the middle, the skills, experience, proof, when are these good enough? When are they developed enough that you can start to go on to the final step of making the connections? When do you have enough here that you can go ahead and put it on your resume and start applying? This can be a very difficult question to answer because a lot of skills are very complex. So for example, if you're familiar with my work at all, I teach people how to be data analysts. And uh, one of the skills that's necessary to be a data analyst is Excel. Well, the problem with Excel is that you could spend your entire lifetime learning Excel and still not know how to do everything. It's such an immense uh, skill set that it's it's not clear. There's not like a black and white of, okay, here you don't know it, here you do know it, right? There's, there's always levels and it's hard to know since you're unfamiliar with the industry because it's new to you, it's hard to know when are you good enough at Excel or whatever skill you need for your particular job, right? Because if you think that you have to know everything, if you need to master the skill completely, then you're gonna go your whole life without ever getting to the final step, without ever applying, without ever being able to enjoy your new career. So let me give you a uh, little illustration that I think will help you kind of conceptualize this a little better and, and get an idea of how this is going to work and, and hopefully give you some more confidence as well because when you're doing something completely new, getting into a completely new and unfamiliar field, it's easy to uh, lose confidence. So here is your skill over time, right? So just a upward trend here. So this is time and this is skill, right? So the more you learn, the better you get, the higher your level of skill gets. And this is true of the experience and the proof as well. You know, as you are, if you're following my process, that is, you're gaining the skills, but you're also applying the skills, practicing the skills, creating actual experience and creating portfolio pieces and, and getting better at answering questions in the future. So you're building your, your skills, your experience, and your proof at the same time. And so you keep getting better and better as time goes on. Now the question is, at what skill level, like what, what point on this Y axis here, is it good enough, right? There's some point where you become hireable, where you become good enough where you're worthy of hiring. So let's say that point is right here, right? So we could draw a line across and here is the, um, the, the place at which you are good enough in order to get hired, right? And we'll call this the threshold, 
right? This line is, is the threshold of higher ability. That's our, our fancy name we'll give it, where if you are at this line or above in terms of skills, you are hireable for your new career. Now, there's one problem with this, and that is that you don't know where this threshold line is, right? It could be here, it could be here, it could be here, right? It's a big question. You have no idea where this threshold is because you've never worked in the industry before. And by the way, don't try to go by job descriptions because job descriptions are always asking for the ideal, right? They're asking for the angel who will fall from heaven and know how to do everything right off the, on the first day. And that person doesn't exist. Companies know that that person doesn't exist. Hiring managers know that that person doesn't exist. So if you see job descriptions and you get intimidated because, well, you are not that perfect angel from heaven, don't worry, like uh, loosen up a little bit because nobody is that perfect angel from heaven and they know that. So don't, don't go by job descriptions to figure out what this is. A better way to go is to find a mentor. Find somebody who already works in the industry uh, who already has an idea. So that's what I do for my students in my data analyst mentorship program. That said, even I don't know this perfectly, right? Because I got hired years ago and the market then is not the same as the market is now. Um, and even like month to month, the market changes. So this line goes up and down over time. So I can give you a rough idea of where it is uh, if you want to be a data analyst, you know, if, if any other career, I, I have no idea. But the, if you have a mentor with industry experience, they can give you a rough idea of where it is. But even still, there's, there's going to be some guesswork involved. You're not going to know exactly. So with that in mind, what do you do? Well, my recommendation is that you start applying early, right? That you, you gain the most basic uh, foundation in the most important skills for the new career, right? You take the introductory level courses or trainings, or, or if you do a program, take the introductory level stuff so that you can say, hey, I know this skill. Right, so for the example of Excel that I was giving earlier, learn the basics of Excel, then write Excel on your resume, and then you can write a little bit of detail about what you know in Excel. So start early, like start when you're, when you're down here, because you don't know where the threshold line is. The threshold line may be down here. You might be able to get a junior level position here, and then as you're working at that junior level position, you're, you are continuing to upgrade your skills as you were working. You're always upgrading your skills. And so you can get higher level positions in the future, but in the meantime, while you are learning, if you get hired early, like it's a low threshold, then you are getting paid to learn. So you wanna catch the threshold, uh, as close to the threshold as you can, right? You don't wanna have to wait until you're all the way up here and then finally start applying because all of this time, right? All this time from, from let's say, from here until here, this is all time that you are learning, but you're not getting paid to learn, right? This is just wasted money. So you could totally be getting paid for this time because you've been, you're that far above the threshold. So my recommendation is that you apply early when you have the most basic level of the skills and then continue applying as you go. Continue learning, right? Continue going up the curve and continue applying as you add new stuff. So every time you learn a new skill, every time you have a new experience, every time you create a new portfolio piece, add it to your resume and your LinkedIn profile. And so apply here and then apply here and then apply here and then apply here, right? And so, you know, maybe you're only sending like 10 or 20 applications each time, but eventually you are going to hit that threshold. Right? As long as you are continuously learning, continuously growing, continuously making yourself a stronger candidate, eventually at some time you have to uh, cross that threshold. And that's the point where you'll get hired. Now, most people make the mistake of thinking that they have to be perfect before they even try to apply. And this is a, 
uh, kind of a fear of rejection maybe it's kind of a pride thing that I, you know i don't want that experience of having to send out 10 resumes and then getting zero calls back but if you can come to terms with if, if you can make peace with that if you can recognize that that not getting called back is part of the process and that's okay and that if you continue upgrading your skills and your experience eventually you have to hit that threshold if you can have that faith in the future which is just faith in a i mean this is a very basic concept right there's it's hard to argue with this but it, it lays it out in a way that you know you understand okay if i continue growing i have to get there eventually and if i'm not there yet if i'm already applying that's okay right so don't feel like you have to be perfect. A lot of people suffer from what psychologists call imposter syndrome, which is that you think that you are an imposter uh, whenever you try to do something new. You think that you don't belong. And this is something that's very common with probably most people and including most of these, these smartest and most capable and most qualified people always feel that way. Whatever they're doing, they're like, oh no, I, I'm um, an imposter, I don't belong here, I'm gonna get found out, I'm gonna be embarrassed because everybody else is at this level and I'm at this level and uh, I'm just, you know, like people made a mistake by hiring me. Uh, and, and so that's just the way people think. It's, it's totally normal and it's totally unhelpful, right? So if you recognize that that's the way that you think, then you can turn it around. Reminds me of that song, I'm a creep, right? I'm a creep. I'm a creep. I'm a weirdo. And then I don't belong here, right? So if you find yourself thinking those thoughts, make a joke about it. Start singing, I'm a creep. I'm a weirdo. And the more like pathetic you make it, the, the better it'll be. You're kind of making fun of your own silly things thoughts and and that will help you get past them but anyway you definitely want to apply before you're ready and this is true with most things in life actually if you take the action before that you feel that you are ready because for a lot of us we never feel like we're ready and so if you keep waiting until you're ready then it just never happens and then if you have somebody that can actually hold you accountable and that can actually give you a little push when you're feeling hesitant, that's very helpful as well. So if you have a mentor, you have some sort of group uh, of people that can support you to do that, then, then that's excellent. And then when you're actually looking at job descriptions uh, and, and probably finding them rather intimidating, you're like, oh, okay, they want this and they want this and they want this and they want this. And, and I have a few of those, but I don't have all of those. My rule of thumb is if you meet 50% of the requirements of the job description, go ahead and apply. Right, because again, they are looking for the perfect angel to fall from heaven that can start hitting the ground running from day one. They're probably not gonna find that person. I mean, unless you're in an industry that's super competitive and there's a million people that are super qualified that are applying, which, by the way, uh, check out my recent video on how to find high value skills in 2022 to figure out whether or not that's the case. Cause that is true with some industries like graphic design, for example, right? There's so many people that are doing graphic design and there's not really a lot of demand for it that you, yeah, you're gonna have to be really well qualified if you wanna get hired. Being a data analyst, which you know is what I teach, is the opposite, right? There's, there's a lot of jobs and there's not that many people that are qualified. So what I tell my students is to look for if you have 50% of the qualifications or more, then go ahead and apply. Don't feel like you have to have 100%. And then of course, if when you go do your first round of applications, if you don't get any calls back, no worries, right? You're applying down here. You're, you're probably going to be below the threshold the first time, right? It's just a test. You're testing the market. This is a test. This is a test. This is a test. This is a test. And like Thomas Edison inventing the light bulb, testing all these different materials, right? Most of them are not going to work, right? You're probably going to have to, well, you know, uh, depending on where you, where you start, but chances are um, you're going to have to go through a few tests before you hit that threshold where you are hireable. So no worries if you don't get any calls back. Just 
note that, right? Make a note of it, say, okay, I haven't hit the threshold yet. I need to upgrade my skills and my experience and my proof a little bit more, and then I'm going to go and apply again. And if you, you know, don't get, uh, don't get replies again, then upgrade your skills, experience, and proof a little bit more, and then go do it again. And eventually you will hit this threshold. So I hope that helps you to conceptualize it in a way that you, you won't get discouraged, right? That you will keep plodding on until you cross the finish line. Now, you've probably already figured out that changing careers is a little bit tricky and it's a little bit it's it messes with your mind a little bit so you really you need all the support you can get um, and so I've created an, an excellent resource for you for free to help give you that support and that is the career hackers Facebook group so take a look at I think it's facebook.com slash group slash career hackers official or I will put it in the description below that group is absolutely free and there are a whole bunch of people that are also working on changing their careers that can support you. We have uh, accountability, we have progress posts every week. It's an amazing resource if this is something that you're looking to do to have that support and to have that accountability. If you're interested in becoming a data analyst, which is an excellent career, it's the career that I came from that I figured out kind of by accident, uh, but it's, it's such a wonderful career because there's so many more jobs than there are people to work the jobs. So that means that the competition is on the part of the companies looking for you, the data analyst, instead of the other way around. And so they pay high salaries, they give um, like flexible work hours. There's a lot of remote opportunities. Uh, it's really in, an excellent place to be. So if that's something of interest to you, and it's not for everybody, right? This is a, a particular sort of person that enjoys this kind of thing. But if that's something that you might like to look into a little bit more, I have an absolutely free training where I talk a little bit about what the position is, like what it means to be a data analyst and how to get started teaching yourself how to learn the skills and how to basically go through the whole process that I just went through here specifically for being a data analyst. So if that's something that interests you, I'll put a link to that in the description below. Check that out and I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please do me a favor, hit the thumbs up or the like button on whatever video platform you're on. Subscribe to my channel, hit the little bell icon for the so you get notifications first of all my future videos. Leave me a comment if you enjoyed this video or if you have any questions. And then I think you'd also really enjoy this video all about how to figure out what are the most profitable skills that you can learn in 2022.